Good morning. morning. It is wonderful wonderful to see all of you this morning on this Palm Sunday. I hope you're having a blessed day so far and that the rest of this weekend goes well for you as well. Uh, We want to welcome those of you who are joining us on Facebook or on the webpage. Uh, We pray that your Palm Sunday is a wonderful day too. A couple of the announcements. uh, Keep in mind there is no Bible study on Tuesdays for the next two weeks. So keep that in mind if you usually go to that. Uh, This, of course, now being the beginning of Holy Week, we have our Holy Week services coming up on Thursday. We'll be here at 7 o'clock for uh, the uh, Monday, Thursday Holy Communion service. On Friday, we'll have the sanctuary open from noon until 3 for you to come in as you will, and sit and pray and meditate and uh, come and go as you, as you desire on that day. So we'll be here for those three hours on Good Friday. And then next Sunday, we'll be out here in the Memorial Garden uh, for our sunrise service at 7 a.m. And then, of course, we'll have our normal service of the resurrection at 10 o'clock on Easter Sunday. So I hope you'll keep all of those things in mind and be here as much as you can be uh, throughout this holy week. Now, if you're able to, would you please stand? Cry out, people of faith, rejoice and praise God. If we did not sing praise, the bearers Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Let us praise the God who loves us, sharing our sufferings, and facing with courage our path of faith. Hello. Yeah. 
right, please be seated. A couple of things before we continue. First of all, welcome to those of you who are uh, joining us for the first time this morning. We are glad to have you here with us. There are cards in the pockets of the chairs in front of you. One of them says, welcome. We hope that you'll take one of those and uh, fill it out and uh, put it in the offering plate later when that comes by. And especially, we would love to have your email address. I promise you, I don't give that email address to anybody else. It's just for me to send out information about what's going on in our church. And then I also want to make sure to uh, say a word of appreciation to those of you who are some of our seasonal folks who are going to be leaving us after today. I, I know that Gail and Roger are headed out after today. Uh, we always love having you here for the months that you're here in Florida, and I never am happy about when you go back north. <laughs> I know you are, but we're not. <laughs> uh, so you will be missed for the months you're gone, but we'll be very glad when you return later in the year. All right, let's pray together. We confess that we are not so different from those who welcomed Christ into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, yet later shouted, crucify him, or remained silent in the face of injustice. We have betrayed you too, Lord Jesus, by our sins, both secret and known. Yet you died for people like us, and you rose on the third day that we might be redeemed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, do not hold our sins against us. Help us to see your glory. Draw us closer to you that we may become more faithful and more joyful servants of the King. Amen. All right, I think Holly probably has something ready for Willow today. Good morning. You look so pretty with your hair all braided. Have you ever been to a parade? Yeah. What were the people like? Were they angry and crabby? What were they like? Um, they were um, looking at um, the people in the parade. Mm -hmm. And they were probably happy and smiling. Well, today is a special Sunday. Do you know the name of today's Sunday? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, you're exactly right. And people were very excited and very happy because Jesus was coming to their town. And they stood in line and they waved their palms and they shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is he. Blessed is he. Who comes in the name of the Lord. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. We are grateful for your sacrifice. We're grateful for your sacrifice. And we'll think of you during. And we'll think of you during. This holy week. This holy week. Amen. Amen. I think that we uh, have just learned how David always knows what to say. He says whatever Polly tells him to say. All right, somebody got something in the box without me seeing you. Who was it? All right, good, Dawn, thank you. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, every Sunday somebody brings something, puts it in the box here. I don't know what it is. I open the box and I make up some little lesson about whatever's in there. All right. This looks like something that holds other things in place. Yeah? Okay. So like a little stake uh, for, I guess, for gardening. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I noticed the other day that uh, somebody has tied a ribbon around one of our plants over here 
uh, because the plant was almost laying flat down on the ground and, and now the plant is upright and being held in place by uh, something like this and a, and a piece of cloth. Um, we, we don't always go the way we ought to go. We don't always do the things we need to do. And sometimes we need a, a little help. We need something to, to straighten us out and keep us going in the right direction. Uh, that's what this does for plants. And I would suggest to you that it's one of the things that we get out of coming to church on a regular basis. Uh, we, we get something that helps keep us straight and moving in the right direction uh, so that we don't wander off onto some other path. Um, you may not know this, but uh, on most Sundays, there's anywhere from 75 to 80 people who are watching our service online. Um, so take this number of people here and add a few more to it, and that's how many people watch our service from, from week to week online. And, and that's wonderful, because some of them are watching from quite a distance. I have members of former churches of mine in New Jersey that watch. I have a high school classmate, <laughs> believe it or not, that watches our services. But we have people right here in the, the Punta Gorda, Harbor Heights area that also watch our services, and I'm very glad for that. I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled that, that you're watching, uh, that they're a part of the life of this church in that way. And for those who are unable to get here, that's a blessing for them. But I, I wish that some of the folks who watch us, who could come here, actually would come here. Because even though uh, watching the services is a good thing, it's even better to be a part of the service, to be actually in the, in the building. Uh, you, you wouldn't be happy if the only time you ever saw your spouse was on TV. Maybe you might. Um, <laughs> but most of us wouldn't be happy about that because we want to be with them, not just seeing them. Uh, so those of you who are watching, I'm so grateful for your watching, but I wish you could be here. And it always applies to us here, too, because you can be here, but not really be here. You know what I mean? Uh, people come to church sometimes, and they just wander off. Uh, these days, people uh, pull out their phones and spend more time looking at their phones than they are paying attention to the service. So uh, it's wonderful for you to be here. It's even better for you to be present when you're here. Okay? So uh, it helps us keep straightened up and going in the right direction. All right. Thank you. If you're able to, please stand for our next hymn, number 277.
Please be seated. Our reading today comes from Matthew 21, 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Well, none of this happened by accident. Jesus had made his preparations carefully. He had chosen the moment carefully. Uh, all of this was taking place during the feast of the Passover, and Jerusalem and the entire surrounding area was crowded with people who had made pilgrimage to celebrate uh, the festival of Passover. Uh, historians estimate that there was about two and a half million people in the immediate vicinity, which is a huge number of people, particularly in ancient times. And with all of those people in that one area and most of them in such a high state of expectation, uh, Jesus couldn't have picked a more a dramatic moment to enter uh, Jerusalem into this city that's already surging with people who are keyed up with religious fervor, the Messiah came. And, and so he and his disciples uh, made their plans carefully. Uh, they prepared ahead of time to borrow the donkey from a friend in Bethany. Uh, and that person was to release the donkey to those who came and said the right words. Uh, the Lord has need of it. And then as Jesus made his way slowly along the road and up and over the brow of the hill, word of his coming was spreading quickly ahead so that before long, uh, multitudes were crowding along the road to, to cheer him. And before long, the crowd doubled or tripled in size. And they were excited. Now, now, we might, as we read the story, wonder to ourselves why they were so excited. Not all of them had seen Jesus. Not all of them had heard him. And, and certainly there were many in the crowd that day who had never even heard of him. But we all know that excitement is contagious. 
especially when there's a large number of people who are already in a celebratory mood. And Jesus counted on that. He knew the power of symbols to communicate, and he, he increased the joy of the people by making his entrance, uh, unmistakably claiming the role of Messiah. And so the, the people spread their cloaks before him, they cut down and waved palm branches, things that were usually done to honor a triumphant king. It reminds us as we read the gospel story of that word of prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9 that describes a scene very like this one. They were shouting, Hosanna, uh, meaning save us now. This is the cry of a people in distress to their king or to their God to rescue them from the bonds of oppression. It's a plea for help and deliverance. So who was he? Who was this Messiah? Messiah, the Hebrew word, uh, the Greek word is Christos or Christ. Both words mean the same thing. They mean the anointed one. Who was this anointed one of God? And if Jesus was a king, just what kind of king did he mean to be? Did he come to uh, lead a revolt against the Romans? Well, that's certainly what the zealots and their supporters thought and, and wanted him to do. That's what they hoped he would be. We already know that later in the week, the, the very people who cheered him on Palm Sunday would cry out uh, for the release of Barabbas and for Jesus to be crucified. But that's not why Jesus was there. He didn't come to wage a war or to destroy, but to love and forgive to be full of grace and mercy, not to condemn, but to help, not in the might of arms, but in the strength of God's peace. Now, almost lost in this dramatic story is the one who gave Jesus his animal to ride. We don't really know anything about this person apart from where they live. We don't even know their name. But he is one of the many people who helped Jesus along the way of his ministry and his life. And there were those people who had opened their homes to him and to his disciples who gave him a place to sleep, who provided a meal. There were those who offered a cool drink on a hot and dusty day. There were those who carried messages to and from various places. There was the one eventually who on Friday helped him carry his cross. All of these people who helped Jesus at some point or another understood the simple statement, the Lord has need of you. Well, we always say on Palm Sunday that Jesus continues to enter just as he entered the holy city that first Palm Sunday, he tries to enter, wants to enter, de desires to enter the hearts of his people. He wants to enter our hearts again and again and again. He wants us to receive him as the king that he is, not the king that we wish he would be. And to those who have recognized him as the Messiah, those who spread the, the palm branches of their hearts and the cloaks of their lives before him, he will enter. And just as Jesus had people who helped him along the way back then, he still has need of people who will help him. And that's one of the reasons the church exists. We exist to be the people who help Jesus. Think about that for a moment. We are the people who help 
Jesus. The church doesn't exist to serve itself, but to serve Christ and to prepare men and women and children who live in the world around us to receive him as their own king. And behind everything that we do here as a church is the, the firm belief and the clear understanding that we are serving not ourselves, but God. We have dinners and fellowship times because in building that fellowship, we're serving God. We teach children because in preparing them to receive Christ, we serve God. We give our money to the church to serve God. We, we do everything that we do because at some point or another, and perhaps, and I hope continually, we hear God say to us, I have need of you. From the biggest things to the smallest things, we serve Christ. And in so doing, we help to accomplish his purposes in this world and in this time. Now, not many of us will ever be widely known. The person who loaned Jesus his donkey, we don't even know his name. And most of the service that we do in and through the church will be done without many people, if anybody, really knowing it. This week, somebody put a purple drape on the cross in front of our church. I think I know who did, but it doesn't matter. God knows who did that. We appreciate whoever did that. But that person won't be widely known for having done it. And anything that we do in the church not many people are going to know about it, but God will. And it's our response of love to what Christ has done for us. And so this Holy Week, let us continue to spread our palms on our cloaks before him. Let's sing our praises and serve him as the Lord has need. So that he may make his entrance into not only our lives, but into the lives of the people in the world around us. And we remember the words of the hymn. We bear the strain of earthly care, but bear it not alone. Beside us walks our brother Christ and makes our task his own. Through din of market, whirl of wheels, and thrust of driving trade, we follow where the master leads, serene and unafraid. Amen.
Friends, as we pray, uh, let's remember the family of Lynn Kelleher. She's been on our prayer list for a while now. We heard this morning that she passed away on Friday. So we want to pray for her family and friends as they go through this time of grief and loss. Those of you who get my emails will have received a message that the memorial service for Nancy Mathewson has been shifted somewhat. It'll still be on Monday, April the 24th, but it will be at two o'clock uh, rather than noon. So two o'clock on the 24th. Uh, continue to keep Nancy's family in your prayers. Glad to see Joyce pairs with us this morning. Joyce had surgery on her shoulder and uh, Trust me, I know how that goes, <laughs> and that's not comfortable or convenient in any way. So we'll keep Joyce in our prayers and all of the other folks whose names are on our prayer concern list. So let's pray. Oh God, we give you thanks this day for preparing our hearts, for helping us to make way for the coming of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that we will be like the faithful ones who were so joyful at his coming and who remained faithful throughout the week, even through the awful events of Thursday night and Friday, because we know the end of that story. We know what happens on Sunday. And we pray that you will help us to continue to be faithful proclaimers of the resurrection. Help us to remember that Jesus lives in us and among us, and that a great part of what we do as people of your church is to help others to understand that and to welcome him as their own Lord. We pray, O oh God, for the people whose names are on our prayer concerns list for each and every one of their situations. We know that you know what they are and that you will provide what they need. We pray for peace and comfort for uh, Lynn uh, Kelleher's family and friends, help, him, help them to not only thank you for her life, but also be thankful that she is now in your eternal care. And we continue to pray for Nancy's family as they too go through this time of grief and loss. Surround them with your peace. We're thankful that Joyce's surgery has been completed and that she is recovering. We pray that that won't be uh, too long or too difficult for her and that she'll have had a good result from it. And oh God, again this week, it seems like every single week we have other things going on in the world that just are terrible. And, and this week there were tornadoes in uh, some of our southern states and so many people lost everything they owned. Some people lost their lives. So we pray for all of those who are recovering from the tornadoes uh, that swept through Arkansas and Alabama and Mississippi and everywhere else that they hit. Help them to know that they are not alone in this time. We pray, O oh God, for all of the things that are going on in the world around us. Some of them are perplexing. Some of them make us angry. Uh, some of them... Uh, are just ongoing puzzles that we never seem to be able to figure out. We pray, O oh God, that there will be an end to the war in Ukraine. And we pray that the one who can make that happen will, in some ways that we will not even understand, will have a change of heart and mind about that and just simply stop it. We pray that you will be with us as we do our ministry here in Harbor Heights and beyond, guide and direct us to everything that we can do to bring people to Jesus and to be the hands of grace and mercy that reach out to the people in need. Oh God, these and all things, we pray in the name of the one who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, our ushers will be waiting upon you now to receive your gifts, tithes, and offerings. pray. Holy God, sovereign over power and pain, glorious triumph and deep disappointment, we enter this holy week bringing our tithes and offerings to your altar and leaving them here in the hope you will use them to make the world a more loving and compassionate place. We are reminded through the scripture that you sent two of your disciples out to make the world ready for your coming. Remind us that your kingdom breaks into the world, not as a spectacle for us to witness, but as a parade where we are called to make a working contribution. We pray in the name of the one who comes not just for the parade, but for the cross at the end of it. Amen. All right, friends, please be seated. A couple of words about communion. Uh, one is that you're seeing me now sanitize my hands. Um, I will be the only one who touches the bread, uh, and you will be the only one who touches the cup, okay? So please know that we are doing everything we can to make this uh, a safe operation for everybody. If you still have reservations, uh, we have the uh, self-contained uh, little plastic cups that have a wafer built into the top of them. If you would rather, when you come forward, use one of those, uh, please feel free to do that. And uh, we welcome everyone to participate in Holy Communion. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a United Methodist. We only ask that you come truly seeking to receive of the grace of God. 
We're going to do a somewhat different uh, Great Thanksgiving today. This one is meant specifically for Palm Sunday, and you're going to have a part in it. I'll be reading the words that are in italics, and there will be sometimes words in plain print that we're going to ask you to say. Okay? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the community of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ who emptied himself into human form to guide us back to you. Through his teaching and his actions he demonstrated that the time had come when you would save your people. When he processed into Jerusalem on a colt the people gathered and cried, Hosanna, save us, because he lived your salvific love in our midst. And as the enthusiasm of Hosanna began to dim in the shadow of plots to crucify him, he did not waver in the love and grace he extended to all. In one of his final gracious and loving acts, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, the rejected stone who is the cornerstone of our salvation, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever.
Let us pray. Since, dear God, in this place, at this table, we have touched, we have tasted, and we have heard the signs of your love for us, grant that we may go away from this house filled with our love for you and overflowing with your love for those who are around us and who share our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. All right, friends, if you are able, we'll turn to hymn number 280. We're going to be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. Remember that following the service, we have a time of fellowship and refreshment right next door there in our fellowship hall, and we invite all of you to join us for that. And please remember to bring your flowers, potted flowers, except hyacinths to decorate our church for Easter Sunday. Yeah, no hyacinths, <laughs> unless you want me sneezing and uh, my eyes watering for the whole time. All right. Now may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day, this week, and forevermore unto eternal and everlasting life. Amen. Amen.